K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com. The leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on k98talk.com. We will keep this promise to the American people. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you will be able to keep your health care plan, period. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. The fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you've got a business, you didn't build that. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. You're listening to America Off the Rails with your host, Rick Robinson. All right, folks. Well, it's Monday. We've made it through another one. It is June 1st, which means it's the start of a new month, which means for those of you who have jobs like mine, everything that you worked for for the month before no longer counts, and now everything starts over. Okay. So, that being said, happy Monday. I know nobody ever says that because who the heck's happy about it being Monday. But I'm going to say it to you anyway, mainly because it's mostly over. I don't know about the rest of you, but I've been off from the day job now for a little over an hour or so. Uh, I've been prepping for the show and been looking forward to it because I haven't done this one in a few days. So, thanks to everybody who's tuning in. Again, this is Rick Robinson. You are listening to America Off the Rails, and it's just a couple minutes past 6 o'clock Central Time right here in beautiful downtown Oklahoma City. And we will be with you for about the next hour. So, something I want to talk about, and i got to get this off my chest. I have a friend. Some of you know her. Um, I consider her a friend. We've never actually met in person. We've talked a few times through Skype. I produce her radio show now that she's moved over here. And uh, we've gotten to know each other through Twitter. Well, and she'll be the first one to tell you some of, some of what she's going through she's brought on herself. But I have a question. For all of you that think like I do, that, you know, if we could just get everybody to start talking again, we could probably realize that we have a lot more in common with each other than we do these nozzles in D.C. Well, see, that's what a lot of us thought Twitter was going to be. Because, you know, it didn't have the overbearingness of Mark Zuckernerd or the filters and all the other things that were happening as we got more and more into Facebook and the more it got monetized, the worse it got and the harder it got to promote your stuff. So a lot of us flocked to Twitter because we were like, hey, yeah, it's only 140 some odd characters, but they don't really restrict you very much. Well, see, here's the problem. And before anybody freaks out, they're actually putting a cabinet together in the next room. So that may or may not occasionally bleed through to the broadcast. I promise nobody's getting beat up. Okay. So that being said... We used to be able to, as a nation, have differences and differences of opinion and actually talk about them without resulting to name call or resor- resorting to name calling that resulted in a lot of hurt feelings. We don't seem to be able to do that anymore. And I understand this friend that I'm talking about, and for those of you who may not know, I'll tell you who it is in a second. A lot of it she's brought on herself, but you have to understand this is how she got attention. This is how she built her brand. She became the chainsaw-wielding bunny. Yes, I know, I just gave it away. But you know who it is. It's Polita Bunny, otherwise known as Sam. And I consider her a personal friend. And I'm very saddened tonight to tell you that she is considering 
leaving social media, at least as far as Twitter is concerned. I don't know about Facebook. We haven't really spoken much since the beginning of the weekend. But it saddens me that someone as prominent as she is in social media and all of the times that she's had things picked up and ran by news organizations that she said on there is considering hanging it up. And I'm not going to go into any of the things that we've discussed privately, but I just want to tell you, if you're following me on Twitter and you haven't noticed yet, I have for one of the few times, <clears throat> other than finding a better picture of myself, changed my, my avatar or Avi as everybody calls it on there for short. The reason I have done that is I feel it's a quiet way that I can support a friend who is struggling with a decision. I don't know what her decision is going to be. I can, and I have to inform you that for the next two weeks, she will not be performing a live show. We have made arrangements to do pre-recorded shows for her, for drops from other shows that she's had in the past. So she still will be having a show air here, at least for the next two weeks. But unfortunately, because of the stress and the fact that she's tired of feeling like her children are always under attack, and sometimes even the mister, she is considering hanging everything up. So if you, like me, are a fan of Polita uh, Bunny on Twitter, and you followed her for a while, and you think that you know she's somebody that you can relate to, I urge you to find those of us that have started this trend and find one of the the Avi covers that you feel fits you the best and go ahead and feel free to borrow it. Let's slide up Twitter with bunnies. Let's do something to show her that she still matters. Because right now she doesn't feel like she does. She feels like all she does is fight off attack after attack after attack after attack. And she doesn't feel like she's making a difference anymore. So let's show her that she is. Let's show her that she still matters. Let's show her that she is still relevant. But ultimately, folks, it is going to be her decision. As the programming director here and as her personal friend, I will not be doing any arm twisting to keep her on the air or to keep her on social media. But I just wanted to let you know that thanks to some bullies and some folks that really use their talents for pure evil, um, she is considering moving away from social media and possibly even uh, radio for the immediate, if not complete, future. So if you have it in you, send some positive thoughts, some positive vibes, some prayer requests, prayer requests out from Miss Bunny. Because Lord knows we could all use them, and right now she could use them especially. All right, so now that we've got some of that out of the way, I may come back to that in a little bit just to talk about it a little more, but I wanted to at least let you know what was going on, uh, give you an idea of why you start may start seeing more and more um, money like Avi's popping up on Twitter because I have seen a few people adopting mine as well as a couple other people's that I know are doing this in support of her. And we're not asking you to get in the middle of the argument. We're not asking you to go pick a fight with the trolls. We're just asking you to quietly substitute your Avi for her, for hers or one of those that we've put out for a while just to show her that she matters to you. You know, because that's one of the things that she's been trying to figure out. And for the long time, she had been completely staying out of the arguments and the shenanigans unless someone was being attacked. She was even telling people, well, no, I don't deal with them anymore. I just mute them or block them. And most of the time, I'll wind up, uh, I'll wind up uh, just muting them because it's easier. So even she, for, the, for a while, had been staying away from the fight until she felt like she really couldn't anymore. And I have to say, I understand that because there are times when I feel like I can't really stay away from the fight either. I'm not the type to see someone that I that I know or that I follow on a regular basis being attacked without saying something about it. I can't do that. It's not in me. She's the same way. So I do understand. I hope, <clears throat> I hope, pardon me, when we take a break here in a minute, I'll actually get a drink of water. I had to do a lot of talking at work today. It seems to have fried my vocal cords. So now I'm going to be talking pretty much nonstop for almost an hour. That should be really fun. 
All right. So anyway, you know, I can relate and I understand how she feels and whatever decision she makes, I wish her the best. And for the next couple of weeks, at least she will definitely be missed. So again, if you follow her on Twitter, uh, send her some love, maybe a DM telling her how much she's, a, she's affected you or impacted you as a person. You know, and I'm not saying, like I said, no strong arming, none of that. Let's just show her she still matters because she does. All right, so I think we're going to go ahead and take a break probably a couple minutes early just so I can go ahead and hopefully get to the point where I can actually grab a drink of water real quick. So we will be right back here in just a couple minutes. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson. You've just now tuned in for about uh, almost 15 minutes of the show. Still got a lot more to bring to you, so stay put. This is Misty, owner of Waxit Studio in Edmond, Oklahoma, and I'm here to talk to you about a skincare product called Theramedics. Theramedics has a wonderful line of products from anti-aging to hyperpigmentations all the way to acne. In fact, everyone at some point in our lives is affected by acne. Acne can cause a great deal of embarrassment and anxiety. And in order to prevent and help other people, I have tapped into this wonderful product called Theramedics. Visit my website at www.prettyskindeep.com. Again, that's www.prettyskindeep.com. The staff of K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network is proud to announce that our very own Rowdy Rick Robinson has been selected as one of the top conservative talk show hosts in the nation for his program, America Off the Rail. Again, congratulations to Rowdy Rick Robinson for a job well done and another reason to stay connected to K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. A show that will change internet radio as you know it. Okay, so let's talk about the story, which I think is hilarious. I'm just going to refer to it as the poop plane, because, like, what else are you going to call it? But there was this plane, okay? It took off. It's the British Airways. They were going to Dubai. Dubai. I, can't, I have a hard time pronouncing that one. Are you, it was British anyway, Airways? It wasn't Jet, British it wasn't, Airways. Wasn't jet Poop? <laughs> Couldn't resist. I'm sorry. I like it. I like it. This is this story. If we've ever had a story that is up our alley, it's this one. It's bathroom humor up from front to back of the airplane. Apparently, they had to turn around to he go back to Heathrow because they said the smelly poo in the toilet became unbearable for passing, and it was so bad. They decided it's so bad that they had to turn around and go back rather than continue their flight. They decided that there wasn't enough Febreze, there wasn't enough anything to handle this. Maybe they should I see a doctor. <laughs> is there a go? Is there a go fund me for this guy? It must be a woman because a woman's going to be mortified, and embarrassed. If this is a guy, you know that he's like out there on Twitter and everything else saying, "Dude, I took down an airplane with how bad that I laid it down." There was an old Not woman girls, who girls. flew on jet poo. <laughs> <laughs> she ate so many burritos she didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so we turned the plane around because we had because they made a big stink. Is it, we've just made it into a haiku at the end, but it, there had to be some real serious nonsense. Mondays, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Now on K98 Talk.
All right, folks, we are back. We are live. This is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson. We'll get right back to it. So let's do it. All right, so a couple other things I want to talk about before we get back to the meat of the... Well, actually, I guess this will be kind of the meat of the show. Rand Paul. What are your thoughts on Rand Paul, folks? Hit me up. You can find me on Twitter. I'm currently hanging out in the chat room um, at k98talk.com chat. Um... I think, well, actually, I'm not sure. But anyway, I'll send a tweet out about it in a second. This will actually give you a link, and you can go in there, hang out with me. We can talk. We can communicate. It's great. Um, also, have a nice, new, shiny email address, so I want to go ahead and give that out now. Uh, that is rick at k98talk.org. Hit me up there anytime you want. Uh, questions, comments, show ideas, guest ideas, hit me up. We're golden. That's what it's for. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, double underscore R underscore OKC. You can hit me up on Facebook. Search Roddy Ricky Robinson. Send me a friend request. We'll talk. We'll hang out. What I do, it's how I roll. Okay, so thoughts on Rand Paul. Let me tell you my thoughts on Rand Paul. I, I kind of, I, I vacillate pretty good on the guy. I'm just going to be honest because there are things that I agree with that he does and there are times when I think he takes things too far. I do not, however, think that his overreaction, as some are calling it, to the Patriot Act is an instance where he has taken things too far. I do not think that at all. I am actually really, really happy with what he's tried to do about the Patriot Act. I'm going to tell you some reasons as to why, but first I want you to hear some of the things that he has to say about the Patriot Act and why it's probably a good thing that some of it, if not soon, hopefully all of it, will soon go away. None heard. Senator from Kentucky can proceed. Let us be very clear why we're here this evening. We are here this evening because this is an important debate. This is a debate over the Bill of Rights. This is a debate over the Fourth Amendment. This is a debate over your right to be left alone. Justice Brandeis said that the right to be left alone is the most cherished of rights. The right to be left alone is the most prized to civilized men. Let us be clear, we are here tonight because the president continues to conduct an illegal program. The president has been rebuked by the court. The president has been told in no in explicit terms, the president has been told that the program he is conducting is illegal. Now, the president opines on television. The president wants to blame it. He says, anybody but me. But you know what? The president started this program without congressional permission. Even the authors of the Patriot Act say that the Patriot Act in no way gives authority to the president to collect all of your phone records all of the time. If there ever was a general warrant, if there ever was a generalized collection of information from people to which there is no suspicion, this is it. We are not collecting the information of spies. We are not collecting the information of terrorists. We are collecting all American citizens' records all of the time. This is what we fought the revolution over. Are we going to so blithely give up our freedom? Are we going to so blithely go along and just say, take it? Well, I'm not going to take it anymore. I don't think the American people are going to take it anymore. 80% of those under 40 say we've gone too far. That this whole collection of all of our records all the time is too much. The court has said, how can records be relevant to an investigation that hasn't started? The court has said that even under these lower standards, even under these standards of saying that it would be relevant, that all of the stuff they are collecting is precisely irrelevant. Now, people say, well, they're not looking at it. They're not listening to it. It's the tip of the iceberg, what we're talking about here. And realize 
that they were dishonest about the program until we caught them. They kept saying over and over again, we're not doing this, we're not collecting your records, and they were. The head of the intelligence agency lied to the American people, and he still works here. We should be upset, we should be marching in the streets and saying, he's got to go. We can't allow this. We can't allow the rule of law to be so trod upon that we live in an arbitrary governmental world where they collect anything they want, any time they want. This is the tip of the iceberg. They're collecting records through executive order. They're collecting records through Section 702. People say, how will we protect ourselves without these programs? What about using the Constitution? What about using judicial warrants? The Sonarif boy, the Boston bomber, they say, how will we look at his phone records? Get a warrant. Put his name on it. You can get a warrant. There's no reason in the world the guy had already bombed us. Do you think anybody was going to turn down a warrant? We should have gotten a warrant before. Get warrants on people we have suspicion on. The Simpson guy that was shot in Garland, he had already been arrested. We had suspicion. Let's hire a thousand more FBI agents. Let's hire people to do the investigation and quit wasting time on innocent American people. Let's be very clear while we're here. President Obama set this program up. The President Obama who once was against the Patriot Act, the President Obama who once said, you know what, we should have judges write warrants. The President Obama who once believed in the Fourth Amendment is the President now scooping up all your records illegally. And then he feigns concern and says, oh, we need to pass this new bill. He could stop it now. Why won't someone ask the president, why do you continue? Why won't you stop this program now? The president has every ability to do it. We have every ability to keep our nation safe. Has, and I intend on protecting the Constitution. Time has All right, so he threw a lot at us in that little about five-minute clip. But one of the things that he keeps mentioning over and over again is warrants. And one of the things that I heard on my drive into the day job today is a local host who kept talking over and over again about how he feels like Rand Paul's wasted all of our times. Wasted our money because they're going to do the things that they're going to do anyway. And he kept pointing out over and over again it wasn't the government that was getting the information. And he kept mentioning how the government, to get to the information, had to get a warrant. I'm not going to mention his name, but I have to say he's dead wrong. Because up until now, up until last night, they didn't need a warrant any longer. They had a FISA court that basically stepped in and told them they could get any information they wanted pretty much any time they wanted it with no restrictions. And they used national security as the justification. So for all of you folks that are standing up talking about how Rand Paul is grandstanding and wasting our times i think i'm wasting our time i think he's standing up for exactly what he should be standing up for because when the patriot act was passed the first time the very first time that's when i started standing up on the rooftop screaming what are we doing what are we becoming what is this going to allow other people to do when it's their turn to wield the power and we're seeing what happens when someone who has very little understanding of how our government actually works wields absolute power. We have the IRS that's been targeting people. We have the NSA that's been listening people and spying on people indiscriminately, regardless of whether or not they can find any affiliations. Hell, I'm sure at this point it would probably terrify me to know how many watch lists I'm on just because I routinely speak out against, the, against this administration. And for those of you who think I'm touting my own horn, I get emails from folks all the time that I had no idea they had folks listening to me. I'm not saying I'm the biggest guy out here. I'm not even saying I'm the best guy out here. But I am somebody who's consistently out here. I'm consistently saying, no, this is wrong. This is not what our government was intended for. 
we as a people need to come together. We need to wake up. We need to put down the remote. We need to get off the damn couch. We need to find a way to get involved. Because I don't care if you yourself have a D or an R next to your name. Chances are we have more in common with each other now than we ever will these idiots in DC because they've become their own separate class. But that's the thing. Now the class that's there, they're mad at Rand Paul. Because he keeps standing up. They keep trying to knock him down and he keeps standing up again. It's like watching the political version of a Rocky movie because they keep throwing things at him and he keeps ducking and weaving and bobbing and dodging and he keeps standing and get, takes a hit here and there. You think he's done and then he gets right back up. I don't, I don't know if Rand Paul, if he decides to run or if he does run, I don't remember at this point if he's declared or not. I don't know if I'll vote for him, but right now he has my respect because he's doing what we all should be doing. He's standing up, telling the government, you have come too far. You will not come any further. This is as far as you go. This is the line where we stop you. This is where we draw it. You cannot go any further. Or in the words of, uh, to pay my father-in-law, who recently, uh, actually coming up this month, past last year, to pay him a little bit of a tribute and to mention one of his favorite characters ever, which is Gandalf the Grey from uh, the Lord of the Rings uh, series. Is, you, you shall not pass. And yeah, if my throat wouldn't have been hurt, wasn't hurting, I probably would have yelled it. But you shall not pass. Someone is standing up. Standing up for you and me, saying, look, this cannot go any further. And no, I don't always agree with Rand Paul. And I know he's been caught on microphone colluding with folks like Graham. I get it. He's not perfect. But this one time, I'm going to stand up and wave his flag because he deserves it. Because he's towing the line while the rest of us are going, I don't know if we should be doing this or not because the Patriot Act has kept us safe for so long. The Patriot Act is a nightmare. It deserves to die, so let's let it die. It's easy. We just all stand up and say, look, we want our freedom more than we care about our safety. And I know in this day and age, that's counterintuitive because you've got city regulations and state regulations that tell you you have to wear your seat belt you have to put a helmet on you have to do this you have to do that don't do this don't get a don't get a mogwai and feed it after midnight and don't expose it to water you know i mean come on what's the worst that can happen okay well that's a bad bad instance to go there but still you know freedom personal responsibility those things still matter at least for today they matter. Rand Paul's standing up for that, saying, look, I understand these companies are gathering our information, but we don't want you, the federal government, to be able to go in here and look at it anytime you want to. That is not something we need to have happen. Think about that for a second. Look at how much that has changed the Patriot Act itself since it was passed. Look at how much it has changed. And look at it now compared to what it was. And it, it, much like everything else, was started with the best of intentions. We saw a hole. We saw things that needed to be filled in. Let me tell you the quickest, easiest way that we could, we could fix everything with the Patriot Act. Let's go back to enforcing our immigration laws. Let's go back to dealing with our migration problem. Because we have a migration problem. We have people flooding through our southern border. And I'm not saying that a lot of them may not shouldn't be here. What I am saying is let's enforce the laws that we have on the books now. Start looking at the ones that don't work and start changing them to make the immigration process more fluid. Get it to the point where it doesn't cost a small fortune to come here in fees. If anything... We should try to get them here faster. As long as they have a will to be here, they want to work, and they want to assimilate. Those are the things that nobody's talking about. No one assimilates when they come to this country anymore. Nobody. And I understand all the arguments that will true assimilation or true assimilation takes generations. And that's true to a point. But, you know, you used to have it in the households. 
from the old country like Italy and stuff when they would come over here. The only language they knew was Italian, but they had children that started going to school in American schools that were learning how to speak English. So the patriarchs and the matriarchs of those households would say, that's it, no more, in this house we speak English only. So that everybody could learn it, because it was the language everybody needed to have to be able to function here. Language is still one of the most widely recognized languages in the country, or in the world, sorry. Granted, there are several different dialects of it now, but English is still a language that is widely recognized and is the trade language for most of the world. And that's because we have had the influence of the sphere of travel and trade and everything else now for a couple of centuries. The problem is our influential sphere is waning. And it's waning in part because of things like the Patriot Act. Nobody wants to do business here anymore. Why would you if you're coming in from another country and you know that everything you do is documented, photographed, cataloged, recorded, and could be used against you later? Why would you come to a country that does that? This is the closest thing to 1984 I have ever seen in my life. And it scares the hell out of me. And we have people all over the media and all of the the big rhino folks in D.C. that are like, ooh, the Patriot Act is good. Rand Paul's probably shooting himself in the foot for his stance on the Patriot Act. I have to tell you, I give him a standing ovation for his stance on the Patriot Act. Because it's thanks to him that maybe we can do something about it. That's the other thing that this other host kept mentioning all day today was that this latest version of the Patriot Act was going to have language in there that talked about how they were going to have to go back to actually getting some sort of a warrant before they would have access to the information. As far as I can tell from doing the research I've done, that's inaccurate as well. That's why they want to pass another piece of legislation called the USA Freedom Act that is not part of the Patriot Act, unlike another host kept mentioning here today as well but it's a separate piece of documentation that covers the issues of whether or not the government should have access to the information and whether it's going to require a warrant. I understand the information is there. This is going to be one of those genie back in the bottle situations. It does not happen. But the truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is, we've given our government way, way, way too much power. All right, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and take another really quick break. We'll be back with you here in a couple of minutes, just long enough for me to get another drink of water. And I hate to do this to you folks, but this one might actually be a little bit shorter than usual tonight because I've noticed my voice is fading more and more as we keep going. All right, so at this point, we are at the bottom of the hour. I'm going to keep trying to keep going for as long as I can towards that 7 o'clock hour, but I'm not sure I'm going to make it because... I've been, like I said, I've had to do a lot of talking today. We'll be back with you here in just a couple of minutes. Not on my watch, our military service members say, as they volunteer to serve, as they move out, stand firm, and take fire. So not on our watch, we say, to the severely ill or injured veterans who can't get the care they deserve to live full and independent lives, even when there's no government funding or a nursing home seems like the only option. We won't leave one warrior behind. Not on our watch. Join us at findwwp.org. Are you conservative in a world of liberal? Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, you're not alone. Hey, I'm Daniel Stafford, host of The Stafford Voice, and I'd like to invite you to tune in each Monday, 10 p.m. Eastern, where I'll break down the events of the week, and together we'll learn about how they affect you. So sit back and get ready for the good, the bad, and the ugly of talk radio right here on K98 Talk. K98 
K98talk.com, a leader in Internet radio. So grab your seatbelts and take the ride of your life on K98talk.com. This is Misty, owner of Waxit Studio in Edmond, Oklahoma, and I'm here to talk to you about a skincare product called Theramedics. Theramedics has a wonderful line of products from anti-aging to hyperpigmentations all the way to acne. In fact, everyone at some point in our lives is affected by acne. Acne can cause a great deal of embarrassment and anxiety. And in order to prevent and help other people, I have tapped into this wonderful product called Theramedics. Visit my website at www.prettyskindeep.com. Again, that's www.prettyskindeep.com. All right, folks, we're back. We're live. This is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson. We are into the last part of the show, believe it or not. Seems like it's only been maybe 10 minutes since the show started. I'm confused at this point. I think I may have accidentally taken an extra break. (laughs) Sorry, like I said, I'm not operating on all cylinders tonight. So if I did take a third break, my apologies. I don't think I did, but I might have. I think I threw myself off because I took the other break so early. All right, but anyway, so back to what we were talking about before. And it all kind of ties together everything, to be honest, because at this point, we live in a world of bullies. That's where we are. You know, Rand Paul tries to stand up. He has the establishment GOP trying to beat him down. He has mainstream media trying to beat him down because they feel like he's making a big deal over nothing. Um, We have even some conservative talk show hosts that are starting to take shots at him because he won't back down. And that's the that kind of goes back to the beginning of the conversation for me today. When did it become such a big thing and such a big deal to disagree with somebody? Because you've heard me. I could have been a total tool to this guy that does local radio here and been like, hey, you're wrong. Dummy, what are you doing? I didn't do that. All I said was I disagree with him, and this is why I disagree with him. Because he kept mentioning things like, the warrants that they used to have to have that they don't anymore thanks to the FISA courts or they didn't. I'm hoping now that that one little piece of legislation or part of it has disappeared, maybe they'll go back to that again. But if not, I'm sure they're they're working behind the scenes to make sure that happens. Now that being said, again, we live in a world of bullies because anymore if you don't agree with somebody, they just beat the crap out of you until you do. It's how we win all of our arguments. It's We don't even have discussions anymore. It's browbeating sessions. You see it over and over again on Facebook and Twitter. Oh, you're wrong. You're an idiot. Well, just because my opinion is different than yours doesn't mean that I'm wrong. It means I have a different opinion than you do. It's like I hear all of these liberals talking about how Bernie Sanders would do such a great job. I don't know Bernie Sanders from Adam. Barely dealt with him. Read a few things about him. Listened to some of his interviews. But what I do know is I don't think we need a socialist in the White House. So no, I don't think he's a good fit. That doesn't mean I'm downing you because you obviously must think socialism is the way to go. I think you're wrong, but and I'm going to tell you that I think you're wrong, but it doesn't mean I'm going to start attacking you and calling you names. See, this all goes back to the same thing. Rand Paul is now being vilified. Some of it locally here, I have a feeling, has to do with the fact that because he did the filibuster the first time we had ever had an event like the Southern Republican Leadership Conference here. It went well, but it didn't go as well as it could have because all of the senators got recalled. So I think that's why there's a lot of hurt feelings here in my home state when it comes to Mr. Rand Paul and why there are a couple of talk show hosts here locally who have taken to attacking him. Again, I'm not attacking them. I'm simply mentioning facts. 
and I personally think he's spot on for doing what he did with the Patriot Act because it never should have been passed in the first place. Here's a good rule of thumb for those of you who are wondering, maybe you're thinking, you know, maybe you're a little younger and you're like, hey, at some point I might get into politics. Okay, so let me give you a good rule of thumb. The better they make the name of the bill sound, the worse possible the bill is going to be. Let's look at a couple of examples. The Affordable Care Act. What has it turned into? The most unaffordable, monstrous piece of legislation ever. The Patriot Act. What has that turned into? Nobody's considered a patriot anymore. Everybody is spied on no matter what. And the government does whatever they want with the information because they have access to it. So again, hello, McFly, anybody home? Just saying, because that's a mess. Those are two of the biggest gargantuan Charlie Foxtrots I think I've ever seen in my life. The Patriot Act and the Affordable Care Act. So again, the better they make the name sound for you, the more likely you are to be being bent over. Let's just be real. The more likely you are to being bent over. And that's because we have this large, this small group that wields a large amount of power and they want to be able to keep it. The more dependent they can make you and the more under their thumb they can keep you, the more likely you are to continue to vote for them to make sure that you get the free stuff that they tell you that you're going to get. So again, what's it go back to? A big group of bullies. That's what they are. Big group of bullies. All of DC is basically a bunch of bullies. I mean, let's just be real. You know, there, there are a few exceptions, but all of them pretty much look at us as useful idiots because we're the ones that pull the lever for them every so often. So they need us to stay there, but they don't like us. This is evident. Completely evident in the way the president addresses people most of the time. The way that um, Boner addresses people most of the time. And yes, I said it that way on purpose. I know his real name is Boehner. Don't send me an email. I get it. It's a joke, people. It's a joke. I mean, and then you've got milk toast like Lindsey Graham. I mean, I just, I don't understand it anymore. When did it become humanly unacceptable to, to disagree with someone? I have friends on Facebook that I disagree with all the time. I've lost friends on Facebook because I've disagreed with them. Or because they felt I've made racial accusations during the recent Ferguson incidents. I'm sorry, but I'm going to say this again. If you don't want to look like a thug, then please, for the love of God, don't get caught on video with a VCR under one arm, a TV under the other, with a hoodie on, and your pants halfway down around your ankles. I'm sorry, but to me, that not only makes you a thug, it makes you a thief. So I'm going to call you what you are based on your behavior. No, I don't know you personally. And for all I know, up until that moment when you decided, screw it, everybody else is doing it. I'm going to go get myself a new TV and a DVD player. You may have been the choir boy last Sunday at church. I don't know. It doesn't really matter at that point because you're not doing that now. But again, Billy, bullies, look what happened in Ferguson. A guy decided that he was bigger and better than the shop owner, so he decided to help himself to a few things. Shop owner called the police. The police, before they even realized the call had went out, were already questioning him because he was dumb enough to hang out and party with his friend in the middle of the road. And then, when the cop tries to deal with him there, he's a big dumbass and decides he's going to fight the cop for his gun. Again, a bully. So, I'm sorry, if you're going to bully somebody, you kind of deserve what you get. I don't care who you were before you crossed that line. Once you've crossed that line, you kind of deserve what you're going to get. I 
Now, that being said, there's a difference with having trying to have a discussion with someone and being considered a bully. Telling someone that you disagree with them and giving them rational facts as to why you disagree with them, that does not make you a bully. Being in a political discussion with someone who is giving you rational arguments as to why they don't think that you are correct and citing you facts and sources and you result to as a common practice that I just recently found out about which is called doxing or you call them out or start making threats to their family or to their children that makes you a bully so again it all kind of ties together because we live in a world of bullies you're either the bully or you're being bullied. And the biggest thing to remember about bullies, and I know cyberbullying makes it harder because they have so many more resources than they used to have. But I remember when I was a kid, there was this one guy who always, always, always wanted to pick a fight with me. And for the longest time, I wouldn't do anything about it. I wouldn't do it because my dad always told me, don't you start a fight. And I'm sorry, but somebody egging me into a fight, to me, if I'm the one that throws the first punch, I'm still, I'm still starting the fight. Well, that being said, there was one time that this guy, who had been for months trying to provoke me into uh, getting into a fight with him, decided to take a swing at me one day after school. So I summarily punched him right square in the gut, and the fight was over, and he never tried to pick a fight with me again. The biggest thing to remember about bullies is to summarily deal with them. Now, for those of you who might be facing bullies on Twitter, because I know they're out there and I know you deal with them on a regular basis, it's not the same as when you deal with a bully in person. What you need to do is not engage them, don't provoke them, have a discussion with them long enough to see where it's gonna go and when you figure out that all they're really trying to do is troll you, then you need to mute them or you need to block them. Plain and simple. Just don't even engage them anymore. Because nobody needs any other casualties. And right now, we are looking at losing one of my closest friends on Twitter and one of the largest accounts that I know may not be coming back to social media because of cyberbullying. And that's what this is. Whether anybody wants to call it that or not, that's exactly what this is. And I understand and she'll be the first one to tell you that there are times when she's brought it on herself. And I'm not saying that I have been completely innocent in some of these exchanges either. But I'm telling you what my policy is going to be from this point forward. I will no longer be engaging trolls. I will no longer be dealing with trolls. I will summarily mute them. I will summarily block them. And then at some point I have a program that can actually, I guess, apparently force them to unfollow me. That will be my practice from now on because I'm more interested in finding like-minded people or even people that I disagree with that want to have a rational conversation. I'm done dealing with bullies. I'm done dealing with crazy people. You, some of you know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to mention their name, but uh, and I actually haven't seen that account in quite a while, but... Anyway, you, you know at least one or two of them that I'm talking about. You've, you've had your exposure with them. But the simple fact of the matter is, don't give in to the bullying. Do what you've got to do to keep yourself sane, but don't give in to the bullying. If you decide you're done, or you know, you've, you've done what you can, and it's time for somebody else to pick up the fight, you know what, that's all well and good. But don't go out on a loss I guess is the only way I can really put it because the simple fact of the matter is if you let them beat you down to the point where you're just ready to hang it all up they do win and I'm not saying that because I'm trying to talk anybody else into doing anything else all I'm saying is there are other ways to get things done Twitter is a useful tool that's what it should be used for you should use it to promote, cross-promote, share with your friends the stuff that you like that you find there. Make sure you're retweeting it. Whether it's us or whoever it is, I don't care. That's what the social media is for. It's to get messages out. 
If someone is getting in your way of getting your message out, then you remove them from the equation. If it makes you feel any better, anytime you block somebody, you know, you're you're techni you're technically, you know, basically kicking their butt because you're just you're taking them out with one shot. So let's stop engaging the trolls. Let's stop giving them more power than they deserve. If someone is being irate with you, or cranky with you, or cursing at you, or calling you names, don't even worry about reporting it to Twitter because most of the time I get the impression they really could care less. But that's why the block button exists. That's why the mute button exists. All right, folks, well, I've made it about as close to that 60-minute mark as I think I'm going to be able to get because it's I can feel my throat trying to cause issues for me yet again. So don't forget, here in just a little bit, we will have Real Serious Nonsense with Angie and Paul back live with you tonight at, uh, I do believe it is uh, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, I think. Could be wrong. No, wait. Am I wrong? No, I don't think I'm wrong. It's 8 Central, 9 Eastern. And then we have Daniel on at 10 Eastern, 9 Central. I think. I haven't heard from him. Um, but he didn't do a show last week. So I'm hoping he'll be back with us this week. Either way, this is Rick Robinson. It's been my pleasure hanging out with you guys for what wound up being pretty close to the hour. And I will hopefully, God willing, and if I still have a voice, be back with you tomorrow. Right here on K98Talk.com the home of Politatainment, the home of the Spark Radio Network, and now the home of quite a few new shows that are being added. Not to mention just a couple of them. Game On with J.D. and Stacy, uh, Bloody Marys and Broadsheets, also with J.D. and Stacy, and now Red Nation Rising, starting this coming Thursday. The station that you, the listeners, are helping to build is getting stronger and stronger and stronger and we thank you for it each and every day because we would do this even if at least I would I would do it even if nobody was listening but it's great to know that I am finding like-minded people that want to do the same thing and help trying to get the country pushing and uh, get everybody moving all in the right uh, direction now that being said I do have to end the show normally in the way that I normal in the way that I usually do and that is by telling you that if you're listening to this show and you feel like there's something that you can do to make a difference, find a way to do that. If you need suggestions, email me. That's why it's here. Follow me on Twitter. Send me a direct message. Say, hey, Rick, I want to find a way to get involved. This is where I am. This is what I know how to do. We can find a way to get this all working again. That's what this country was founded on, was personal responsibility, not reliance on the government, but reliance on each other. Put down the remote, get off the couch, engage, get involved, find a way to make a difference. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this particular episode of America Off the Rails. Just as a reminder, I will actually be on live Friday morning, uh, not here on K98 Talk, but I will be uh, doing a guest spot on the Rod Eccles show. It was supposed to be last Friday. We had a little bit of a communication snafu, so I will be doing that bright and early Friday morning. I will be on at 8 a.m. Central, 9 Eastern. Once I find out for sure where it's actually going to be, I think it'll be on Live 365, but I don't know what particular platform over there he is using or whether he started one of his own. But regardless, once I have a better idea of a way to get you guys the information so that you can follow along should you choose to, I will get the information to you later. Until I talk to you, do something to make a difference, whether it's in your own life, the life of one of your family members, the life of a friend, or even the country. Do something to make a difference. Start small if you need to and work your way up. But do something to get involved. All right, folks, that is going to do it for this episode of America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson. I'll be back with you tomorrow, God willing, as long as I've still got a voice. Thanks for everybody who's tuning in.
don't, 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 don't. Hey, you guys, I'm getting him. Later. Game over, man. It's game over.